Hi class, a uh, quick note about paper. Paper is really important. Uh, the, the pad that I had specified for the class, uh, it's again 12 sheets, um, uh, it's just watercolor, watercolor paper, specifically designed for watercolor, which means it, it absorbs water. It doesn't deform too much. But the trick is, down here you'll see something like 140 pounds, okay? Pound of paper is the amount of, I guess, that would be like the pure rag they put in it to the pure fabric that's in it, okay? And what that does, it gives you a really strong uh, paper. This is what the assignment we had. And so you can feel it's really, it's really thick and it's got some texture to it. See this, all these little textures in here, which are kind of fun. That gives that, that watercolor sort of feel to it, okay? Uh, so you've got this 140 pound that we're gonna use for class, okay? If you decide to use a, uh, a difference, let's say a smaller pound, this sketchbook that I use, this is a, a 60 pound paper. And generally I use, this is one of my sketchbooks. And let's see here. This is one of the ones I used in class the last semester. Remember the robot? Oh, here, let's this, this paint him. So we had, um, let's see here. So if you decided you wanted to go back, let's say, and re revisit some of your work, previous work in your sketchbook, you can paint You can paint them, okay? You just gotta be careful how much water you use. So with this one, I might even use the, the, the square brush a little bit. Okay, this one here, we talked about doing the square brush and not put down as much water. So you don't wanna, as they say, flood the, flood the canvas here too much. So I'm gonna give this guy, oh, it's a robot. So we're gonna do a cool to warm, sort of a metal feel kind of feel to it. Let's see if how well this works out. Let's see, I put a little bit of, I'll use up in my paints. Oop, there we go. My paints are using a bit of this. Oh, I think too about when you're doing colors, it's always good to have a little extra paper on the side that you can kind of test the, to, to see what it looks like, okay? So with this, I could come in here, I'm gonna put a little bit of a warm wash really quick around the bottom. And this is sort of the reflection, let me get in here. The reflection, uh, sort of a warm reflection of this metal. So you can just put a little dab in here. But if you go quick, again, you know me, I like to sketch, I like to sketch things. And so you just sort of sketch in the color like this. This is sort of a dry brush technique. There's not a lot of, not a lot of water. Okay, just a little bit of color. And I mean, just a little bit of water and some color. Um, and you can put that on the bottom. Then that's, the, that's sort of the ground tone I put in place here, okay? Now what I'm gonna do then, I'll go back in, clean my brush. Uh, a little bit of, uh, let's say some cool, some, uh, here, you can see my palette. A uh, little bit of some cool, let's see, maybe this blue here. That's a little more metal looking blue or sky blue. So I'm thinking uh, metal, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, pick up the sky tone. And then we can put a little bit of this in here like this. Oop, a little too much maybe. And then I use the napkin to kind of take some of the pigment down. So I've got this kind of this nice dry. If you, you can't put water down like a watercolor paper. The only problem is the paper will kind of pucker a little bit. But if you work quick, a little bit down, especially where he's got sort of the, the blue hits his, hit the metal here. This will kind of work. Put a little bit of gray, a little bit of black. I don't recommend a lot of black. But you can add a little bit of color to some of your sketches from uh, last semester. Ooh, a little too much. Now, of course, one thing nice about having a napkin or a, a cloth is you can pick up a little bit of that, a little bit of that color. But he may be, I may have put a little too much on here. So I had a little bit of water. I kind of pick it up with my, my cloth. So I'll get this side be the dark side. It's a little bit of color. Now think about doing watercolors. White is never really part of the watercolor medium. Uh, I mean, white, excuse me, white paint, I should say. What you're trying to do is leave the white coming through the paper like this, okay? So you can go back and add a little bit of color. 
to your original pieces of work that we worked on like last semester and like that but as you can tell with this is now this paper here is a 60 pound as i mentioned a 60 pound paper let me check here yeah 60 pounds so like when i draw on this i usually draw on one side a lot more delicate so you can actually go back in and kind of paint in something but you gotta be very what they call a dry brush just uh, you know got a little bit of water and um uh, a little bit of paint and you kind of sketch it in and it kind of works okay but uh this is 60 pound paper that's how that reacts um some of our actually i think some of our sketchbooks from last semester i'm sorry were actually more of the 100 pound so this was a lighter lighter weight pound i'm using here i think our black sketchbooks this is some sketch i'm doing for a project and um again same thing i can go back in a little bit i got this wood project i'm working on and if i don't put down too much water just a little bit just a little bit of color again it has this kind of nice wood color to it see that but i'm not putting a lot of lot of, lot of water down they call it sort of a dry brush technique see that so we can go back in and a little bit of this and you just quickly put the water down or i should say the you know color down and the water, the quick technique is, the, the dry brush technique, if you can see here, is you just sort of take the brush and you lift it. So you're just sort of going back and forth, but it's a very dry, dry water medium, not flooding, flooding the, um, the surface. On the thicker paper, like the one we got for class, the, one, the 140 pound, this one, we'll actually, um, we can actually flood water in and the paper is not going to distort that much. A little bit distorts, but it's not going to distort that much, okay? One of the projects I did in preparing for the class was, oh, one of my favorite artists does cows. So this is my cow and uh, did a house. So we'll be getting into this a little bit later. But again, so recommend the, the thicker paper, but if you wanna use up some paper, uh, we can use it, but it's just gonna be just a little different technique. And again, we're looking at outside. So that's a little bit, of, that's a quick, oh, and other things you can use. You can also use, um, once you get good enough, you wanna invest in these, have these canvas boards. So when you have, you can use canvas, you little boards, you can take um, uh, wood and use a white paint, you know, like a white household paint. Uh, sometimes they call it gesso. You actually get gesso as kind of the paint medium. It's called for whiting out canvases or sometimes just using white uh, paint will work. I recommend flat. So the pigment will actually get into the little cracks and things. But you'll find out when you start to paint that you have a lot of uh, places to go. It depends on what the what the what your result you're looking for. So for our result, again, I recommend the the 140 paper, and that's going to give us a nice. We can put a lot of water down, and again, it's nice and thick, and it'll keep nice on our little bound notebook. Okay, so just a quick uh, pass on the uh, a quick in review of just some paper, and why the different pounds mean.